Sufi Tariqat or the subtleties, these are referred to as realities of the heart. Drawing from the Quranic words, virtually all Sufis distinguish Lataif-e Sitta or six subtleties. These are known as Nafs, Kal, Ru, Sir, Khafi, and Akfa. These Lataifs or the centers designate various psycho spiritual organs or faculties of sensory perception. Just as the Adi Shankar, when he was six years of age, he was wandering in Himalayas. Imagine Shankar hails from Kerala, the southernmost tip of India, and Himalayan mountains, the northernmost tip of India. He traveled at the age of six from Kerala, wandering to reach to the mountain in northern range. Six years of age in 3rd century BC, 3rd century, there were no means of transport. He would have walked all the way from there. He was wandering in search of his master. Then he happened to see a master who happened to be his master later on. He inquired, who are you? Then he composed six couplets that is known as the Shatkam means something of six stanzas. And he says, I am neither mind nor intellect nor ego sense nor the memory. Mind, intellect, ego sense and memory these are the various parts or the four corners of the one composite way that we know as mind. In the same way, nafs, kal, ru, sir, khafi, akfa, these are the various aspects of kal. Sufi development involves the awakening of these spiritual centers of perception that lie dormant in an individual. Each center is associated with a particular color and general area of the body, which is quite similar to the Hindu aspect of chakras. Basically, if I look at it, what is needed for the life, the essentials of life, they are existential. But we have given these different names. The same psycho-spiritual centers, Hindus term as chakras, Sufis term these as latayas, and these are located at the different parts of the body. Sufi development involves the awakening of these spiritual centers of perception that lie dormant in an individual. Each center is associated with a particular color and general area of the body. Also often it is associated with a particular prophet and various and these varies from order to order. The help of a guide is considered necessary to help activate these centers. After undergoing these processes the dervish is set to reach a certain type of completion. Sufi practice, maragba or Sufi meditation, zikr or remembrance of God and purification of one's psyche of negative thoughts, emotions and actions and nafs, loving God and one's fellow irrespective of his or her race, religion or nationality and without consideration for any possible reward is the key to ascension. Just as before Buddha, there was no emphasis on compassion. Buddha emphasized the need for compassion. 
anyone can attain to spiritual states of awakening fana or baka this is a self realization or enlightenment but if there is no compassion then it is of no use just as a man becomes very rich he amasses wealth his status and everything but if he is not compassionate he will not help anyone what is the use of those resources if he has enough riches but he does not have richness of the heart and he does not share his resources with the others what is the use of that person and we term that person by a different name so to buddha emphasize that before one progresses in meditation there has to be compassion initially the compassion is for all those people who are near and dear to you we do not have love even for our near and dear ones unless there are ulterior motives love is selfless it only gives shares but it does not demand anything when an individual begins meditation his compassion attains the cosmic texture he lives for the a greater community then his compassion flows towards everything sentient or insentient only such an enlightened one whose compassion has gone beyond the finite infinite the known and unknown that person becomes a sheikh what does a sheikh or master require from you does he require any money any favors nothing he shares his time insights his only concern that arises out of his compassion for the entire creation all these people belong to the existence part of existence they are the children of allah subhanahu wa taala and i have been bestowed an authority or some gifts bounties from allah subhanahu wa taala i must share it with these people these people belong to allah subhanahu wa taala irrespective of caste creed gender or anything that separates us from the others loving god and one's fellows is important shri aurobindo has said somewhere it is very easy to say that i love god and it is better to love human being it is most difficult to love another human being you do not know god you have not seen him for you god is a myth whether you accept it or not and it is very easy you are not losing anything in saying that i love god dearly but you cannot love your wife your husband your children because they do not do or act as you want them to act they want to have their own ways and means you want them to grow in a particular way so you don't love them you just get separate from them how can you love god to love god you have to begin from the surrounding jesus has the parable of jesus is very beautiful love thy neighbor it is most difficult to love your neighbor love your spouse because the male female relation is very volatile it is they are like intimate enemies this is the beautiful word coined by an american author intimate lovers intimate enemies they are lovers they are intimate yet still they are enemies you see when a wife talks about her husband he is very good but always but comes in but so and so 
husband talks about his wife my wife is a very beautiful person very nice but so but always comes there is no unconditionality in that lovingness and that is the reason this word has been coined intimate and if you begin to learn to love your fellow being the spouse the neighbor you can begin to love the entire creation and thus your love towards allah subhanahu wa taala will flow naturally loving god and one's fellow irrespective of his or her race religion or nationality and without consideration for any possible reward is the key to ascension these six organs or faculties that are known as subtleties are nafs the ego sense kalb the heart center ruh sir khafi and akfa and the purificative activities applied to them contain the basic orthodox sufi philosophy this purification of the elementary passionate nature or tasqiyah nafs followed by cleansing of the spiritual heart so that it may acquire a mirror like purity of reflection tasqiyah kal from tasqiyah nafs to tasqiyah kal and become the receptacle of god's love or ishq and illumination of the spirit that is known as tajalli roop this is the process or simple words your consciousness your understanding has to be crystal clear like mirror just as mirror simply reflects without making any changes it gives you the true image of the person that is standing in front of it it does not add or delete anything it reflects as it is this is why it is called mirror like when we are talking about a particular person we are not mirror like we does not say or reflect the things as it is sometimes when people ask me i said i am simply reporting i am a reporter i this is how i saw more than this i do not know he said but you can give your opinion i said no i leave that mirror always leaves the opinion for others to me whether this person is ugly or beautiful mirror simply reflects an image that is created out of you simply reflects your true image captured at a fraction of a second this is what an image is when a camera is flashed in front of you it captures your image reflective of your facial expressions and moods because your facial expression reflects the moods in a fraction of a second and from that we try to infer about the person same way the mirror reflects one image one facial expression or mood in a fraction of a second and then it changes whereas in case of an image it remains static once it has been captured by the camera so a man of awakening a man of meditation need to be like a mirror his consciousness his understanding has to be mirror like reflecting all that comes in its presence in front of it does not make any judgment or anything this is the essence of any tariqat so from tazki e nafs to tazki e kalb and then when one becomes the receptacle the mirror like of god's love or ishq and illumination of the spirit he attains to the state of tajalli ru this process is fortified by emptying the egoistic drives 
which is known as tajalli sir and remembrance of god attributes or zikr and completion of the journey by purification of the last two faculties kafi and akfa these complete the sufi methodology it continues further 